Good morning, it's morning. I hope you're doing well. In the fourth video, we implemented some simple collisions between the player and other dots. So let's improve that, fix some edge cases, and add some preliminary scoring, since this is a game after all. So, um, saw that last time, that is unnecessary. Let's do, I think unshift is a thing. We'll prepend on the beginning of a list. Um, the whole idea is targets will be all the objects that can, can collide with each other. Eventually, um, targets will be added to by the level generator. So whenever we start level one, it'll add the um, initial dots that you're supposed to push off screen. Level two will add a different set. Um, yeah. So the reason why I'm going to add player to the targets is because last time I copy pasted the, the player movement and collision detection code and basically pasted it down here inside the target loop. Uh, basically, you know, same logic. So let's get rid of that. All right, so the player is going to have um, preference in the collision detection for now. Okay, I've got those, this. Okay, how does the player currently differ? The player currently gets clamped at the screen boundaries, and that happened. Yeah, so if is player, we will clamp. Otherwise, if a, another dot moves off screen, we're going to increase our score. So let's just do a simple score counter here. And we'll add some a DOM element and some DOM manipulation code to update it on the page whenever you do score. Okay, well, in other ways, does this differ? I don't think there's any others, really. Same stuff, we got the direction and movement countdown comparison stuff. We have target.direction comparisons and updating the tentative positions. And we have looking for collisions. So, right, that's what I need to add. So the player tested for collisions with others. What I will do, all right, after tentative updates, and then we will test for collisions. And what we'll do here, <clears throat> I and targets, this will be let J and targets, and Phi equals J. We don't want to compare with ourselves, of course. Right. We need to have, so target is the current target, and let's let other be other. Collision between other and our tentative position and we are the target now and that is second object so we'll be transferring our movement to the other that we collide with um let's leave these for now and right the player gets a different dot No, 
actually this is easier just to do. Hi. Sorry about that. So let's see here. Is player then black? Good old ternary, and then I think that is it. Okay. Yeah. Let's see if we crash. We have this player is not a function. Right. Ah, yes. No, it's not a function. It is a variable. Okay. okay, let's see if we... Whoa, that's really fast. And that did not do anything at all. That's... Why is that so fast? What changed? Oh, I bet because I have a double double update. <laughs> All right, get rid of, get rid of the redundant now redundant code. Uh, let's try again. That's better. Nice. And it's not actually transferring velocity. You might have to step through this here. Oh, um, pardon me while I think a bit. Oh, I, I never actually, um, <clears throat> transferred the the other um, tentative velocity into the actual object itself. Okay, but what we also want to do here is if out of bounds Score and remove target. So we're not actually going to score yet. Um, we need to only score if the non player dot is off screen. All right, let's see if we get our collision back. Good. Oh, and then yes, off screen. Okay. Pardon me while I do this. Since I didn't have the snippet ready for testing out of bounds. All right, so if the dot is off screen, we will increment the score, but we also want to skip this target. For now, instead of dealing with the messiness of removing an object from a list that we're iterating over by index, let's just add a um, um, done flag for now. I need to add one to player so we don't crash anything there. Okay, so if this non-player target moves off screen, we will move it to done, increment the score, and up here, skip ourselves if father.done continue. Skip those done, done dots. Target. And now we should have no crashes. The dot just disappears off screen. And 
All right, we're about 10 minutes in. Let's add scoring. Mm -hmm. Oh, wrong one. There we go. Yep. Okay. Oh, interesting. I don't know what the elements look like here. Um, adds main. I wonder if it prepends main. I wonder how this works. Let's see where that shows up in the DOM. Shows up above. Okay. Well, we can deal with that, I suppose. For now. All right. <clears throat> ah. That one. Okay. Every time score is updated, and text equals score. Think happened. New text and null score element. Oh, yes. Good old. <laughs> yeah, of course. So we will just be lazy right now before I get a proper on ready um, setup going. Document dot on ready. In Jake query parlance, we will um, just do the lazy way for now. Just want to make sure it works, and then we'll close out this video. Oh yeah. Okay. So we don't have mention of whether we're done with the game yet. Um, Let's see here. What does the game do when it's done? I can't remember. Um, if score equal to target stop, whoa, that's interesting completion. Like minus one, then game dot done. I believe is how you do it. Yeah, because we'll have the player in there. We don't want to discount or take the player out of the equation. One, two, and three. Okay, game dot done is not a function. Oh, interesting. Because where it was. Real quick, we'll just look this up. End. Okay. I will spare you. Eh. You can stop watching if you want. Faster, faster, faster. Oh, wrong way. Good, that does work. Okay, so the movement, everything stopped. Excellent. All right, thanks for watching.